Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're having a good weekend. I uh, want to do an overview here of a knife that I am quite fond of, this being the Lone Wolf Harse T2 Ranger. And um, before I get started, I apologize if it sounds like I'm drilling for oil here. I have my six month son in the swing behind me and he's calm for once in his life. So we're gonna see how long that lasts. Um, the details on this knife, so it, it is designed by William W. Harse, you can see right there. Um, this features a 3.9 inch blade, a CPM S30V blade that is bead blasted. Um, closed, you're looking at 4.9 inches. It has an overall length of 8.8 .8 inches. Um, this one actually, so the weight on this is 4.5 ounces. And I looked up several again, these, these haven't been around for about 12 to 14 years. Um, some of the sites reported this as seven ounces. And, and when I read that, I was like, that, that can't be right. I mean, th this thing, it, it's, it's a feather, featherweight. Realizing that there's a 3.9 inch blade, there, there was something else there, but then I looked into it more. This one's four and a half ounces. Um, or 4.5 ounces, as it were. Um, this knife features titanium liners. Uh, the frame is titanium. It does have um, fiberglass reinforced nylon scales. So we'll, we'll kind of get to that for a little bit. Um, most definitely running bronze washers. And actually er earlier today, I'll post a pick right here. Um, I did take this thing fully down just, just cause the action wasn't great before, but I honestly like, I have this thing running really awesome now and realizing that this thing was, was new, um, hasn't been touched in a while. Um, you know, kind of cleaning out the, you know, 14 plus years of gunk and everything that kind of builds up in a pivot. Um, this thing's running great now. Um, it is going to be right hand tip, um, tip down only. So that could be seen as a limiting factor, a little bit old school there. She shows her age there. And this was made in Oregon back in the day. And, um, you know, I want to go through a few of my observations from carrying this knife. Um, again, if you've watched any of my other cha uh, videos on my channel, like I'm a huge fan of Lone Wolf knives. And um, at the end of this, I kind of have a little aside after we go through the details of this. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in and we'll get started. All right, before we go through some of my observations from taking apart this knife and kind of just carrying it, fiddling with it, etc., I want to do a couple comparisons. And the first one we'll do is to a Spyderco PM2. Looks like that. Um, it, it's, you know, fairly large knife here. And then the other comparison I wanted to do was to a Spyderco Native. Looks like that. And then finally, I'm very excited to make this comparison. So I actually have a Spartan Blades Harse folder. And Mr. Harse, he's been making the same blade for, <laughs> for quite a while. Like this, this is from 2021, DLT exclusive. This one's from probably 2009 Lone Wolf. But as you can see, like <laughs> they're like, it's crazy. I, I loved seeing this. And, and ever since I got this, um, yeah, this T2 Ranger. I never put these side by side, but it's kind of funny to me. And like, I mean, one of the plugs that I make here coming up is like, oh man, the lanyard hole is so big, whatever. He's been doing this for a long time. This has been a very, you know, this is one of his like, you know, kind of uh, wheelhouse designs. And you can see here we have his actual signature. Here it's just in script, you know, William W. Harse designer kind of cool guys like i don't think there's anybody else that has ever ever put these two knives together and it's kind of cool doing the same thing all right we're going to jump right into this kind of overview of this knife um when i first got this one and i will post a picture or pictures right here i don't really know yet haven't edited this video yet but you know keep in mind this is a 14 plus year old knife um i noticed almost immediately on the uh pivot there was almost like rock set it wasn't you know that blue loctite that kind of you know it's easy enough if you get the right you know torque spec it breaks free it was kind of a bear to take this thing down and um i also noticed that there were two different torx bits that were needed so you have a t8 as well as a t7 so that was another thing again, not, not a big deal for me. I was able to set, take it down pretty easily, but just, just something to be something to be cognizant of. 
All right, my first observation upon picking up this knife is just, it is super lightweight. Again, 4.5 ounces for a 3.9 inch blade. That That is like, that's very impressive even by today's standards. Um, again, we, we see that weight reduction based on the titanium liners. Um, I think also the blade thickness is very appropriate. One of my kind of critiques of um, the yeah, Spartan blade Harse folder was just like the thickness of the blade and the, you know, handle to blade ratio. This one is very balanced and kind of thin. Like, I mean, it doesn't, the blade, that's not where it makes up for it. Obviously, this is a full frame titanium knife as opposed to slimmer titanium, literally probably a third of the thickness as well as having this, you know, polymer injected fiberglass handles. But um, that was almost immediate to me, the, the feeling of just this being such a lightweight, very like flicky in your fingers. It just feels like, yeah, like you could use this as a tool and, and that was <laughs> that was really cool to see. The next observation that I had was just the open construction of this knife. I really do like how you have these titanium barrel spacers back here. This knife was extremely easy to take down. And, um, you know, I, again, took this thing apart earlier today, cleaned it out, whatever. The action's a lot better now. But I love knives that are kind of open kimono and you can kind of see what's going on. There aren't a lot of places for anything to hide. Like, I, I think that that's really cool. Um, the next thing that I wanted to bring it up, and I kind of covered it in the overview, is is this will be right hand uh, tip down carry only, which like that that kind of dates this knife a little bit, but I don't see it as a bad thing. Like I, I realized what they were doing, you know, back in the day, you know, certainly this Spartan Harse. I know sometimes when you have like a right hand tip up carry, the pocket clip can get in the way, and they just kind of they went with like the best option back then i think which i mean when this thing is open it's super comfortable you don't get any hot spots wherever like the back of your hand right here which like that's normally where you know a pocket clip would rub into you you don't have any of that but it, it does take a little getting used to having it be tipped down so so i will say that the next observation that i had was just the jimping on here which I love and I wish more knives did this. I mean, certainly even the Spartan Blades Harsage, it does it a little bit, but not to the extent. Like, I love the jimping ramp that is on here, right? So like, if you kind of choke up on this knife, you're you're locked in. And, and keeping in mind, like when it's closed, it, it's still like, you know, it's gonna bump up a little bit. So that's a little bit weird. But when you have this thing open and you're actually doing work with it, I love having not only jimping, but that jimping ramp. And then the other thing as far as jimping goes, you turn this thing around and this like sawtooth jimping is absolutely insane. Like if you had a naked titanium frame on here, similarly to the Spartan Blades Harse, it would get annoying really fast. I mean, this is more intense than what's on the Spartan, but they do make it work because of the fiberglass reinforced nylon handles. So that was almost a non-starter. But if you looked at this based on looks alone, you'd be like, man, that is gonna tear up your hand. It, it really doesn't because of the fact that you have that rubberized coating over it. And I think that that's really cool. All right, the next thing that I noticed about this knife were the, I'm gonna call them like a step up thumb stud here. So, you know, they're not the same circumference all the way up and there's almost like different layers that kind of get smaller as it goes up. but. It is super comfortable. And, and looking at the Spartan Harse, um, they kind of, it keeps the same diameter all the way up. And, and for me, it's, you know, it, I don't know, it, it sticks out a lot more. It might just be like an early 2000s, you know, trend to do this step up. Certainly a lot of like the older Microtechs I used to own had the same thing, but I kind of, I kind of miss that. Like I like the, the step up where it's not one circumference, you know, you're not, for me, what, what's on the Spartan for a you know 2021 version is a little bit more obtrusive. Like I wish they would have stuck with these thumb studs. Like I think it's it's extremely useful and uh, it doesn't take away anything from the design really. The next observation that I had was just the, the bead blast finish on all the exposed metal on this. And I really, like I wish they would bring this bead blast back. I don't know what it is. It's probably just nostalgia, but 
I absolutely love the bead blast finish on this. It's kind of like matte colored, very subdued. Um, you know, like I think in today's day and age, we get really into kind of, you know, shiny knives that pick up fingerprints, whatever. I miss this old school bead blast finish and I wish more knives carried that over to today. All right, the next point that I wanted to make about this knife were these handles, right? So we have nylon reinforced fiberglass handles that cover up these titanium scales. And to be honest with you, it's anyone's guess whether or not they will stand the test of time. Obviously, as far as deterioration goes, they're gonna be the first to go. But I mean, this example we see right here, very good condition, no problems with that, but it's definitely something in the back of my mind. All right, the next observation that I had um, was just kind of the the sound and the quality of the lockup here. And I, and I think a lot of times in today's day and age, we're kind of used to this very metallic, like, pinging sound. So the, here's like a Nimble X here. You can hear it. Like, it's just very high-pitched again. I, you probably can't hear it so well on my phone, but compare that, this, to the sound of this Harse by Lone Wolf. It's just very kind of like bank vaulty and in just a very positive lockup. Um, another lone wolf that I have here is this uh, Laredo. Uh, same thing. I mean, you open it, and I think this is kind of indicative of a lot of these knives that we see from the early 2000s. There's just not a lot of like metallic pinging going on. They're just very positively locking up. Again, like if I flick this one, very high pitched as opposed to uh, Laredo. I don't know if you can hear that, but but to me that was just an observation. Like I kind of, I opened this thing and I was like, oh man, like that that's what I'm used to. Like I love that sound and I really can't describe it. All right, the last observation that I wanted to bring up about the Lone Wolf Harse T2. And honestly, like I, Unfortunately, I hadn't compared the Spartan Harse with, you know, the Lone Wolf Harse, but just the lanyard hole. I feel like out of all my knives, this thing, I mean, you could double up 550 cord and throw it through here if, if you can see that. But again, it, it's not relegated just to this older design. I thought at first I was like, aha, I found out a difference between, you know, <laughs> way back in the 2000s to today, but they're still putting these like extremely large lanyard holes through their knives and I don't know like I'm that that's kind of a question mark for me in the sense of I don't really run lanyards on knives unless they come with it um and the only one that's ever came with it is like a Chris Reeve for instance um so that, that was kind of interesting to me and that concludes my overview of the Lone Wolf Harse T2 Ranger. Um, I didn't really cover it in the beginning, but so this being the T2, there is also a T3, which sports a 4.8 inch blade, which is just absolutely crazy. I, I really hope I'm able to get my hands on one at some point. If you have one, please hit me up. I would love to take it off of your hands. But, you know, this being the, the little brother to that, I think it's very comparable. Again, I, I didn't didn't know it at the time, but, um, you know, the Spartan Harse folder definitely gets its lineage from this, you know, Lone Wolf T2 Ranger. So I think that that's pretty cool. This is probably, you know, the only place on the internet you're going to see these two in the same spot. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And, um, you know, certainly Lone Wolf, like they did a lot of really amazing collaborations during the time that they were a company, William Harse notwithstanding. Um, I really can't explain my, ex my obsession with Lone Wolf knives, but I love them. I own several at this point i will buy more of them like i think i just i really love high-end knives from the mid 2000s like everything about them they're just very purpose built no frills like no weird finishes on anything like they just like they had a purpose and they built them to a standard and and i absolutely love that about them um I certainly do like keep my eye out for these. I have a standing kind of, you know, notification on eBay should these things pop up. Um, they're, they're definitely floating around and, and oftentimes people don't really know what they have or if you see them and you know, you're not trying to pick them up, please comment. I will, I will take them off your hands. Uh, but, um, you, you know, I think that that's really cool. You, you can kind of get crazy with these. Some people ask, 
you know, astronomical prices for these things. Like, I don't think these are worth, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but, but it is kind of cool. It's like an obscure US made company that um, I'll actually get into in a little bit. I wanted to end my, you know, overview of this knife, particularly for just the, the diehard lone wolf fans to, uh, to speak afterwards. But, um, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of these knives. I will collect these. I, I don't really, I don't look at myself as a knife collector. I really, I started this channel and what, I, what got me back into knives was just trying to find like the one EDC knife to rule them all. But this is a soft spot for me. Like I will pick these up. I will collect them, um, realizing that there's no service. Like if, if anything happens to this knife, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm up a river without a paddle, but it's, it's a risk that I'm willing to take. Like I, I love these knives. I think they're, a really important part of my collection and um yeah so we'll, we'll wrap up the overview with that um stick around if you want to get into more of a uh lone wolf talk here uh have some some more information based on the research that i've done again i'm kind of a lone wolf nerd at this point but um yeah appreciate y'all tuning in and we will see you next time all right so i kind of started filming my uh yeah bonus footage for this uh lone wolf video but um I'm just going to make a whole new video about it. Like I, I want it to be kind of quick, kind of the, the history of Lone Wolf, where they came from, what happened to them. So I um, appreciate you all tuning in to that, uh, yeah, T2 Harse video. Like um, really great knife. Can't say enough good things about it. But uh, yeah, see me in my next video. We'll, we'll talk a little Lone Wolf.